So tonight, we're going to look at two questions. And the first question is quite easy to answer. That's going to take us a few minutes. And the second question is more complicated. That will take up the rest of the sermon, just to give you a heads up. I'm just going to dive straight into the... Um, well, I was going to dive straight into the, the, um, the first question, but I'll, I'll pray now. Um, one, one more prayer. Um, Father, it's really easy for us to come to church and to hear the word spoken. It's easy, it's easy for us to, to come to church and, and speak the word. It's easy for us to read the word. But, but Lord, it's, it's easy for us to um, just, just leave the church unchanged, Lord. Um, it's easy for us to not um, engage with, with you through your word, Lord. So we ask that um, in these next few minutes, you would be speaking to us and ministering to us and helping us grow closer to you, Lord. Um, that's my prayer for, for tonight. So, yeah, amen. The first question is this, it's how can I become a Christian? Um, I hope that a lot of you in here will already know the answer. Um, but you know what I've found is that there's quite a lot of confusion about what it means to become a Christian. So I'm going to start by looking at a few lies that I hear quite often. A few um, maybe mistakes that we make in, in answering this question. The first lie is that you can become a Christian just by calling yourself a Christian. Um, this sounds almost stupid, doesn't it? But um, some people, I feel, they, they come to church and they, they listen to the sermons and, you know, they come again next week and they come again the week after and they start doing Christian-y things like, you know, being nice to people and praying and reading the Bible. Uh, these, those are all good things, but um, they start doing Christian-y things and spending time with Christian-y people and they get to this point where they say, you know what, I might as well just call myself a Christian now. Um, and, I mean... <laughs> I think, I, think, I think that happens to a lot of people, but the truth is, just because your Facebook profile says you're a Christian, that doesn't mean you are one. Um, so I'm just going to jump into the second lie. The second lie is this. There isn't a certain prayer you can pray to get you into heaven, right? This happens a lot at Christian events. You might go to um, an event where everyone's in a big tent and the, the person at the front says, okay, so if you want to be saved, I want you to, to raise your hands, close your eyes, maybe kneel down and then pray this prayer after me and then you'll be saved. Um, if that was true, that would be really great because it would make evangelism a lot easier. We could give people a script and we could say, just read this prayer and then you'll be saved. Um, but the truth is, you won't find anything like that in the Bible. You won't find that in this book. Um, there is no such thing as the prayer. Third point, you can't become a Christian just by living a certain way. It's really good to give lots of money to charity. It's really good to come to church every week, and it's good to be nice to people, but none of these things make you a Christian. So you can't become a Christian by what you think about yourself. You can't become a Christian by what you speak with your mouth. You can't become a Christian by what you do with your time and your money. But there is a fourth lie that I think lots of us believe, um, and, that's, and that is that um, you can become a Christian by believing that Jesus is God and that he rose from the dead. Lots of people think that you can become a Christian by believing Jesus is God and that he rose from the dead. Problem is, though, the devil believes that. The devil wholeheartedly believes that Jesus is God. He doesn't have any doubts about that. And the devil believes that Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. But the devil is not a Christian, is he? The devil is not going towards heaven. And so those are the four lies, I think, that um, many of us believe about how you can become a Christian. But the good thing is, when we're stuck for what to believe, when we hear a lot of lies, there are a lot of lies in our society, lies going around that we might believe. When, when, when we're kind of in the midst of a lot of false, like false truths or, or um, wrong things, we can look to the Bible for what is true. And there's a, there's a, a bit in, in Acts, at the end of Acts chapter 16. You don't have to turn here, I'm just going to be quickly here. Where someone goes up to Paul, a guy goes up to Paul and he asks Paul, he says, what must I do to be saved? That's the simple question. That is the first question we're asking today. What does Paul say? Does Paul say, I want you to, um, I want you to raise your hand, close your eyes, and then repeat this prayer after me, and then you will be saved? Does Paul say that? No. Does Paul say, okay, what I want you to do, mate, is I want you to get out your phone, I want you to go onto Facebook, and scroll down to where it says um, religious views, and then just change that from atheist or is it Jewish? I change that to Christian and then you'll be saved. Does Paul say that? No. Does Paul say stop drinking alcohol and then you will be saved? No it doesn't. What Paul says and most of you will already know this is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So what's, how do we become a Christian? By believing in Jesus. That's what we're told from the book. That's what we're told from the word. Believing in Jesus isn't just believing Jesus existed. 
Believing in Jesus isn't just believing he existed. Believing in Jesus in the original language in the Greek is to put your trust in him, to trust him with everything, to have faith in Jesus. So the answer to the first question is how is um, you can become a Christian by putting your faith in Jesus. We're saved by faith alone. Simple, right? We still have a problem. We still have a problem. Our problem is that faith is invisible. Imagine Jesus comes up to you tomorrow and he says to you, mate, he looks you straight in the eye and he says, mate, are you legally able to drive a car? What you could do is you could get out your wallet, you could pull out your driver's license, show it to him and say, look, I'm legally able to drive a car. Why? Because a driver's license is a physical thing. It's a thing you can see. If Jesus came up to you tomorrow and said, do you have faith in me? Could you pull your faith out of your pocket and show it to him? I don't think so. Um, And so our problem is that faith is invisible in the same way that wind is invisible, right? We want to know that we have faith, but we can't just see it with our eyes. So the second question is, how can I be confident that I'm a Christian? How do I know that I'm a Christian? How can I be sure that I have faith? That's our second question. We can't see faith, but I want tonight to show you that it's possible to, to really be confident that it's there. Tonight, to answer that question, we're reading from 1 John chapter 2. So if you've got your Bible with you, um, I, hope, I hope you do. Um, it's good to bring a Bible to church because sometimes what the guy at the front says, hopefully not in this church, but what the guy at the front says is, is not always um, what's in the book. So um, if you get out your Bible and turn to 1 John chapter 2, 1 John is right at the back, um, just before Jude, which is just before Revelation. Um, there's 2 John and 3 John in there somewhere as well. But um, yeah, 1 John chapter 2 verses 3 to 6. It's only four verses, but we're going to learn so much, I hope, from this tonight. One John chapter 2, verses 3 to 6. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we're in him. Whoever claims to live live in him must walk as Jesus did. So the question we ask the passage is, how do I know that I've come to know Jesus? And the answer we get from the passage is simple. It says, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commandments. What it's saying is, The way you work out whether you're a real Christian or not is by whether you obey the commandments of Jesus. You look at your life and you see whether you obey him. Um, But why is that? Why? Well, obedience, obedience to his commands, is a sign of faith in the same way that smoke is a sign of fire. So I was writing this when I was in the countryside, so it's a bit easier to imagine this. But imagine you're standing on top of a hill and you look off into the distance and you see some smoke rising up into the sky. If you see that smoke, you know, even if you haven't seen the flames, you know that there is a fire beneath that smoke. Why? Because smoke comes from fire. Fire is the only thing that causes smoke. So in the same way, when we look at our lives and we see that we obey Jesus, we know that we're a Christian. Why? Because knowing Jesus is the only thing that causes us to truly obey his commands. Does this mean that all Christians are perfect? Does this mean that all Christians always obey everything that Jesus ever said all the time? Well, I think most of you know the answer to that question. It's no. No one here today is perfect. So I, think, I think you know that. But um, if we look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, we'll just confirm that. It says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if you're here today and you think you're perfect, then I'm sorry, but the Bible says that's not true. You're not perfect. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. We say that a lot. You know, someone says something against you and you say, well, no one's perfect. We kind of like to hear that. It's reassuring to know that no one's perfect. Um, And that's good. It's good. That's why that verse is there in the Bible. But the thing we don't like to hear very often, the thing that that is more challenging to us, is verse 4 of this passage, which says, The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So I've brought here today lots of Liverpool merchandise. 
This is my Liverpool blanket. Um, oh, that was my Liverpool mug cluttering. I've got a Liverpool bowl and a Liverpool mug for you to see. I've also got a Liverpool t-shirt that I'll put on. It's going to make a loud noise on the mic. So I've got a Liverpool t-shirt, I've got a Liverpool blanket, a Liverpool bowl and a Liverpool mug. I look a lot like a Liverpool fan. Does that make me a Liverpool fan, you tell me? No, I could tell you this, I've never ever been to a Liverpool game. I've never seen Liverpool play live on TV. I never look at the BBC website to check whether Liverpool is playing or, or what the score is. If you, if you ask me, oh, did you see the game last night? I wouldn't have a clue. I don't like football, to be honest. So am, so am I a Liverpool fan? No, I'm not. I just look like a Liverpool fan. So no one's perfect. But this passage is telling us that if you're here tonight, no matter whether you call yourself a Christian, no matter how many years you've been coming to church, no matter whether you've been baptised, no matter what you feel in your heart, no matter um, whether you've ever prayed the prayer, if you don't really care about what Jesus says, and if you don't even try to obey his commands, if you live life just the way you want it, then, then I'm, I'm sorry, but you don't know Jesus and you aren't really a Christian. That's, that's the message from this passage, or one of the messages anyway. So I'm sorry if that hits really hard, um, but I just really want to show what this passage is saying. I really just want to um, reveal to you what's in, in the Bible. And I can make a promise to you, though. This sermon is nearly finished. That's the first promise. The second promise is that this evening isn't nearly finished. There is so much time this evening to sort stuff out with God, to do business with God. So even if you're feeling really discouraged right now and you're thinking, oh, I'm not really sure, you could walk out of this room with a smile on your face. That is my promise to you. So that is really the end of the sermon. Um, but the last couple of verses in our passage really summarize what I've been saying. Um, verses five and six say, but if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. If you take anything home this evening, if, if you want to remember one sentence and one sentence only, it's this. Jesus doesn't save us because we obey him. We obey Jesus because he saved us. I will say that one more time. Jesus doesn't save us because we obey him. We obey him because he saved us. I'll take this Liverpool t-shirt off now. My brother's stuff, just in case you're wondering. Um, first bit over. So we have some time now to do business with God. But how we relate to God, how we speak to God tonight, how we spend these next few minutes, is really going to depend on where we're at with him. So I think, and I think, every one of us here is in one of these three categories. And whatever category you're in, there is good news for you tonight. I'll tell you that. There is good news for you tonight. The first category is this. Maybe you aren't really a Christian. Maybe you came to church knowing that. Or maybe you just realized that you're not really a Christian. Second category is this. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe I've just been a bit confusing this evening. I have a tendency to do that. Um, maybe you're not sure where you stand with God, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not. Um, third category, and hopefully there are lots of us here who are um, in this category. Hopefully that lots of us here have more confidence in our faith now. We've, we've looked at our lives and we've said, you know what, I'm not perfect. I, d I do a lot of stuff wrong, but my life is centered around Jesus. I, I do love Jesus. I do follow him. I do obey his commandments. So wherever you stand with God, there is good news for you this evening. And there is time in a few minutes to do business with him. So if you're in that first category, if you're here tonight and you know you're not a Christian, you know you don't know Jesus, the good news for you is that it doesn't have to stay that way. Better stay to my script. Um, the good news for you is that it doesn't have to stay that way. 
The good news is that God loves you loads. He loves you more than your parents love you. God loves you more than, your, more than any human could ever love you. He wants you to get to know him. He wants you to enjoy a relationship with him forever. None of us deserve that. None of us here deserve a relationship with him because we're not perfect. But Jesus died, as we're told in the classic verse, Jesus died so that whoever believes in him will not perish but eternal life. This offer is open to everyone. He loved the world so much, not um, he loved some nice people so much. He loved the world so much that whoever believes, um, that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, to follow him, what you need to do is, to, is twofold, two sides of the same coin really. One, you need to repent. That means to turn away from all the wrong stuff we do. Not just turn away from the wrong stuff, but turn towards Jesus and believe in him, to put our trust in him, to to trust him with everything, trust him and believe in him to save us from all the wrong things we've done. If you don't know Jesus, in a few minutes, I really want to encourage you to come to the front, grab someone who looks nice and pray with them, or just pray by yourself. Um, Either one's fine. And there there are going to be some people here um, willing to pray. Um, Second category, let's get this. Yeah, so um, wherever you're at tonight, if you come up to pray with someone, no one's ever going to force you to do anything or say anything. They just want to help you. Um, So second category is if you're not sure where you stand tonight, um, there is good news for you. If you're not sure whether you're a Christian or not, there is good news for you. The good news for you is that Although I may have confused you tonight, God wants you to be certain that you're a Christian. God wants you to have confident faith. He, know, he wants us all to know where we stand with him, whether we are in a relationship with him or whether we're not. That's why these verses exist as encouragement to believers. Um, so if you're not sure yet, in a few minutes, come up to the front, grab the sheet. And there are some sheets here that say verses for confidence in faith and they have lots of different verses on and you could read them meditate over them think about them um, but if you're still not sure um, grab someone who you trust grab, grab a Christian maybe someone older than you um, or grab one of the people at the front here talk it through with them and then maybe get them to pray with you that would be really good um, third category I hope um, I hope a lot of us are in this category um, If you're sitting here tonight and through the sermon, you've been thinking, yeah, my life's not perfect. Yeah, I've done a lot of things wrong. Um, I still get stuff wrong. But I do love Jesus. I do try to obey him. If that's what you're thinking tonight, this is so exciting. And this is the bit where I get to get excited. There is good news for you too. If you know 100% that you're saved, if you are confident in your faith, then you can believe that all the promises in the Bible about Christians are true of you. There are loads of of promises in the Bible about Christians, and they are all true for you. The good news is that we can get the joy that the Bible talks about. Whether you're in category one, category two, or category three, we can all be headed to that if if that's what we wish. We can all be headed towards um, joy, joy, joy that not just in in happy times in life, but joy that that helps us get through the hard times. If you look at look at guys in the Bible, look at James, uh, look at um, Jesus, look at Peter, look at Paul, look at um, Stephen. These guys, they have two things in common, really. The first thing in common is that their lives were characterized by suffering. They suffered the most horrendous things. The second thing common about these guys is that they, they were some of the happiest people in the Bible. They knew what it meant to have joy. They had joy in their hearts, not just a smile on their faces. You see, confidence in our faith is the key to unlocking joy in every situation. We have so many promises from God in the Bible, and to make that easier for us to access, tonight we've got lots of promises, um, verses at the front here. So um, there's a a less colorful white sheet with lots of verses here, and um, there are some more colorful um, verses with like pretty pictures in the background and nice fonts and stuff. Um, So if you're you're here tonight and you've been encouraged, you know know what, you've looked at your life and you've said, I love Jesus, I want to get to know him more, I want to have more joy, then the good news is that is that if you, if, you, if you shove the promises of God into your heart, if you, if you drill them right down deep, then you can have joy, joy that helps you persevere through suffering. So take a, a white sheet and maybe take one of the colorful verses. Um, maybe go back to your seat and just read them over. 
Maybe pick one that really speaks to you. That, that might be good. Pick, pick a verse that really speaks to you. And then take that verse, maybe favorite it on your phone, maybe write it on a post-it note on your fridge. And then tomorrow morning, when you're feeling less close to God and less ready to worship him, you can, you can look at that verse, you can read it, and you can preach it to yourself. Not just shove it in your head, but drill it down into your heart. You can preach that to yourself. When you get ill, you can preach that to yourself. Preach that promise into your heart. When, when things are difficult at school or at work or at home, you can, you can drive this truth into your heart. And I think you'll find that over time, the truth will set you free. So as a closing kind of sentence, the joy that we get from God doesn't take us away from hard situations. I, I, pr- I promise you this, that the joy we get from God does not necessarily remove all your suffering. What it does, it, it doesn't take, it, take you away from the suffering, it takes you through the suffering. And so remember that tonight as well. So I'll give a recap. First, if you don't know Jesus, come to the front. I really want to encourage you to give your life to him. No one's going to force you to do that. But turn from sin, turn towards Jesus, and believe in him. Talk with someone and pray with someone if you want to. Second category, if you aren't sure if you know Jesus, come and get a sheet um, from there. Read the verses on there. They they could help you. But then talk about it with someone. They they can probably help you um, as well. They might be able to help you understand the verses. Um, third category, if you know that you know Jesus, come and get a sheet and, and a colorful verse as well. And then hold on to those promises through your week, not just this evening, but, but through the rest of your life. Then maybe, maybe find another Christian and pray with them. Pray for them that they would experience more joy tomorrow, more joy on Tuesday, more joy on Wednesday, more joy continually increasing through their life um, So yeah, there's going to be some music on in the background, but I just want to encourage you to come at the front, give your life to to God. Um, If if you're someone who's willing to pray with people, maybe kind of gather here-ish. I don't know if there's, is there a prayer team on tonight or whatever? Just come and grab someone you trust and pray with them. Um, Yeah, let's go.